to another episode of Webcam Sessions. This week we're going to be working on one of my all-time favorite techniques uh, to kind of use for strumming and, and kind of strumming a solo. This is something that's called parallel octaves. Um, now there's two main ways of doing this technique and we're going to learn both of them today. Um, and it kind of depends on your hand shape and what's comfortable. Uh, it's kind of funny because I use both ways in the way that I originally wasn't comfortable with, I now am. And Anyways, parallel octaves is a technique that allows you to play two notes together instead of a whole chord in what we call an octave. So it's actually the same note played twice. So if we're looking at our ukulele and I say play my uh, D note here on the second fret of the C string, using my index finger, the octave above it would be here with my pinky finger on the fifth fret of the A string. So these are both D notes, and you can hear they sound the same, just one's higher and one's lower. What's cool about this is this makes it so if we just play these two notes, it's not a chord, it's a single note in octave. So this can be played over a variety of chords. Basically any chord that has a D note in it can use this octave and sound good. So it really opens up a lot in terms of what you can play over chords because now if I'm playing a D major chord or a D minor chord, both are going to have a D note, obviously. But I could also be playing a B minor chord or a B flat major chord or a G major chord or anything that has this D note in it or this D note, because again, they're the same note, I can play this with, so kind of cool. But let's go and learn the technique. So we know that we gotta use these octaves, right? So I got my second fret here, fifth fret here. Index finger is going to be on the second fret of the C string, pinky on the fifth fret of the A. Now, the goal is to be able to strum the ukulele with just these two notes ringing. So if I just play these here and I strum, well, we got a problem. Uh, my G and E strings are still ringing. So what I need to do is mute them. And this is what makes this technique really, really difficult, is you wanna take your ring finger and lightly touch it on the E string. And you'll notice I'm about at the fourth fret, but I'm not pressing the string down. I'm only resting it. And if you look here, you can actually see when I'm pressing the string down, that space goes away. But when I'm just touching it, you'll notice that you can actually see underneath the string. Then my middle finger is going to come up over the top and just be touching the G string. So you'll notice it's not pushing the string down, but it's rather just touching. And what's really important with that is it needs to make sure that it's not touching the C string because it doesn't want to be muting that. So this is the ultimate technique that feels kind of like this. Because instead of doing this, it's like with different fingers. Because essentially what we're doing is we're using our index and pinky fingers to press down with our middle and ring fingers to lightly touch. So we're literally emitting different amounts of force depending on what finger we're using. Again, this is a pretty advanced technique, but it's a good one to start practicing right now because for everybody, it just takes some time to get comfortable with. So when I've got it pr correctly pressed, it should sound something like this. You'll notice that the G and C strings are both muted while the C and A are both played together. Right? So now what's really cool about this is if I do some basic strumming with it, it sounds almost like a chord with some muted action in there too. And if you struggle with a rhythm like that, be sure and check out my uh, Ultimate Ukulele Strumming course where that rhythm and countless others are, are actually covered. Check it out right there. But anyways, so essentially what I can do now with this technique is once I get comfortable muting those two and playing the others, I can move this and create some different sounds depending on what note I'm playing, right? Now the real difficulty is as you start to move it, you'll notice that the frets on the ukulele get smaller as you go up. So your finger distance has to decrease as you're moving up and increase as you're moving down. Another thing that just takes a lot of time. But if you're thinking about it, it can be much easier because if you know that it's going to get a little tighter up here, it can help kind of squeeze the fingers in a little bit and pull them out as you're going back down, right? Now to practice this, what I actually really love to use are your fret markers. Um, so most ukuleles will have dots on the front and the side or one of the two. Um, and essentially wherever there's a dot, if your index finger is there, it's going to sound good. 
Uh, it's going to be in what we call the key of C minor uh, or E flat major. It's, the key is not relevant right now, uh, but rather it sounds good. And so if I put my index finger on the third fret here, my pinky will naturally go to the sixth. And the reason is the same as what we talked about before with these two D notes. You'll notice there's two fret distance between these fingers. It will always and forever be two frets different wherever I go up and down. So if I go to three, it'll be three and six, right? So two frets in between. Uh, the number is three different, three, four, five, six, but you'll notice there are two frets listed between. Now I can mute with my other fingers here. And if I play this three, it sounds something like this. Now if I go to the next dot, that'll be on five, and the next dot on seven, then 10, then 12. You can see that this can start to create a really cool sound. Right? And now if I want to strum it, You can hear it's really nice, you know, clean sound. So you don't have to think about what you're playing when you're first practicing it. Just keep it so the index finger is on one of the dots. And you can even go all the way up to 15 if you feel so brave. And it sounds good, right? So at the beginning of the video, I said there are two different ways of playing this technique. Another way of playing it that's a little less popular, but actually the first way I learned it, is you still use your index finger and pinky finger. But now you take your middle and ring and just touch them both on the E string. So they're just touching, again, not pressing. And take your thumb and wrap it around to mute the G string. Being sure, again, to not press with the fingers other than the index and pinky. And this is a great way of doing it too if your hands are bigger because your thumb can kind of stretch over the top. Pretty cool. So the best application of this technique, in my opinion, is when you're learning how to solo. As you get to be a better player and are trying to do more with, um, you know, playing with a group or, or playing with a recording or whatever else, and there's an opportunity for you to take a solo. It can be very overwhelming. It's like, what scale do I use? What do I, what do I do, right? And this technique is my favorite one to be able to do a very unique sounding solo that's more like the ukulele, right? If you're just ripping some lick, it's very similar to what a guitar might sound like, but you don't, you don't hear this technique as often with a guitar as you would uh, an ukulele. And the trick is, you look at whatever chord you're soloing over, and as long as you play the notes of that chord, it'll sound good with this parallel octave. So let's play, say that we're playing a G chord, for instance. Right? If I'm playing a G chord, and I look at each one of these notes, I can see that there's a G note, a D note, another G note, and a B note. And if I look at a fretboard map or something else and find, okay, well my D note's here, that's going to be my octave on the D. Now I find my G note, which will be up here, that'll be my G note, and I find my B note, way up there, right? And there's my B. So if someone is playing a G chord, and I want a solo, I can just use and create kind of a cool sound in a pretty simplistic way, right? Now this technique and this approach, this is all you know, more advanced than a lot of the stuff that we've done here on webcam sessions. Um, and you know, different episodes will be different skill levels. Uh, and so if this feels a little bit overwhelming, it's okay, it's a pretty tricky concept, but you can start practicing it right away. And if you get that comfort with being able to press down two fingers while not quite pressing down the other two, it actually helps for a lot of different things down the road. And so this is parallel octaves and it's one of my favorite techniques to use. Um, if you have any questions about it or if you maybe do it a different way, be sure to leave a comment below and uh, I'll see you next week for another episode of Webcam Sessions.